This lesson is going to be on Ezekiel chapter 18 with the title, Each Person is Responsible for His Own Sin or Who Will Live and Who Will Die. Ezekiel chapter 18, because we're talking about who will live and who will die, there's a couple of other things we're talking about that's in this life or the second death. This life or the second death. This is what we're talking about. So what is the second death? Second death is in Revelation 2 and 11. It talks about the second death and it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And what are you overcoming? Your sins. You're overcoming your sins and the sins of the world. The next precept is going to be Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6. Chapter 20 and verse 6 where it reads, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of the Most High and of Hamashiach and shall reign with him a thousand years. And also down in verse 14 of the same chapter, it reads, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And then the last precept we have is going to be Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have Salakia, shall have their part in the lake which burnt with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now let's go ahead and get into chapter 18 of Ezekiel. And it reads, And the word of the Lord, Yahweh, came unto me, saying, Verse 2, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Yisrael, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, saith the Lord Power, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Yisrael. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Verse 5, But if a man be just, and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither have lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Yisrael, neither have defiled his neighbor's wife, neither have come near to a mistress woman, and have not oppressed any, but have restored to the debtor his pledge, hath spoiled none by violence, hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with a garment. He that hath not given forth unto usury, neither have taken any increase, that hath withdrawn his hand from iniquity, from sin, that hath executed true judgment between man and man, hath walked in my statutes, and hath kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just. He shall surely live, saith the Lord power. Yahweh. Verse 10, if he beget a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that doeth the like to any of these things, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even hath eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife, have oppressed the poor and needy, has spoiled by violence, have not restored the pledge, and have filled up his eyes to the idols, hath committed abomination, hath given forth upon usury, and hath taken increase, shall he live? He shall not live. He hath done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Verse 14. Now, lo, if I beget a son 
that seeth all his father's sins, which he hath done, and considereth, he thinking about what his father has done, and doeth not such like, that hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither have lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Yisrael, have not defiled his neighbor's wife, neither have oppressed any, have not withholden the pledge, neither has spoiled by violence, but hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with a garment, that hath taken off his hand from the poor, hath not received usury nor increase, hath executed my judgments, have walked in my statutes, he shall not die for the iniquity of his father. He shall surely live. As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence, and did that which is not good among his people, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity, in his sin. Verse 19, Yet say ye, why? Doth not the son bear the iniquity of his father? Because that was the previous precept that the father had. When the son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and have done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Now let's move down to verse 21. And it reads, But if the wicked will turn from his sins that he hath committed, and keep my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord Power, and not that he should return from his ways and live? It's talking about repentance. Verse 24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. Verse 25, Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Yisrael, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, committeth sin, and dieth in them for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considereth and turneth away, he repenteth from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet saith the house of Yisrael, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Yisrael, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Okay, let's move this down to verse 30. Therefore, I judge you, O house of Yisrael, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord Power. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity, that is sin, shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, all your sins, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart, a new mind, and a new spirit, from a wicked spirit to a righteous spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord Power. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. 
You see, this is the, the one chapter in the Bible that explains the difference between a sinner, someone who actively engaged in sin, and someone who has repented, who is not actively engaged in sin. Someone who commits a sin, acknowledges his sin, and asks forgiveness of his sins, and turns from those sins and follows the right path. This chapter of Ezekiel chapter 18 is very detailed and explicit from the Lord to the prophet Ezekiel, and we're reading it today in 2023 to explain who shall live and who shall die. Okay, in addition to uh, Ezekiel chapter 18, there's a precept in Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 10 to 16. And we're going to take a look at that. And the uh, heading of that is restoring the people of the Most High. The Most High reminds Ezekiel that he is a watchman. These are promises of hope from um, Ezekiel chapters 33 to chapter 48. So let's take a look. Ezekiel chapter 33 verses 10 to 16. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Yisrael as we're doing now. We're trying to reach the elect of Yisrael, those that are prophesied to repent. Two thirds of Israel would not. That's in Ezekiel chapter 13 verses 89. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? You see, some people think, let's just go ahead and, and continue to sin and just ask for forgiveness. But that is not the proper way. Verse 11, say unto them, listen closely, as I live, saith the Lord power, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, of the Israelites, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Yisrael? Verse 12, Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. You see, he's righteous, but he turns back to wickedness. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. Verse 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, commit sin, all his righteousness shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he hath committed. He shall die for it. Verse 14. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If he turn away from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. And do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he hath robbed. Walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity. He shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. You see, and it goes on into the treatise of the people of Israel asking, stating that the Lord's ways uh, are not equal, but it is equal. You, you, you're rewarded for righteousness, and you are duly rewarded for wickedness. That is how it works. All praises to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai.